boys and girls, welcome back to Miss Goodman's story time. Um, it's day two and we are on chapter three of Coraline. Before we keep going, make sure if you t if you've got your reading buddy, get him handy. Um, I've got Bulbasaur today. Keep me company. Um, go and get yours and. While you're doing that, have a think about what's happened in our last two chapters of Coraline, our previous two chapters. So pop it on a little pause there and talk to whoever's with you about what happened um, in the previous two chapters of Coraline. So I'm hoping everybody's paused and is starting again for chapter three. So she's gone back up and Miss... Uh, Miss Spink or Miss, Miss Forcible just given her that round stone that's got the hole in. She's got it tightly clasped now. Chubby. The next day, the sun shone and Caroline's mother took her to the nearest large town to buy clothes for school. They dropped her father off at the railway station. He was going into London for the day to see some people. Caroline waved him goodbye. They went to the department store to buy the school clothes. Coraline saw some day glow green gloves she liked a lot. Day glow is um, like neon. Her mother refused to get them for her, preferring instead to buy white socks, navy blue school underpants, four grey blouses and a dark grey skirt. But mum, everybody at school's got grey blouses and everything. Nobody's got green gloves. Could be the only one. What does that say about Coraline? Her mother ignored her. She was talking to the shop assistant. They were talking about which kind of pullover to get for Coraline, and were agreeing the best thing to do would be to get that one that was embarrassingly large and baggy, in the hope that one day she might grow into it. Coraline wandered off and looked at the display of Wellington boots shaped like frogs and ducks and rabbits. Then she wandered back. Coraline, there you are. Where on earth were you? I was kidnapped by aliens, said Coraline. They came down from outer space with ray guns. But I fooled them by wearing a wig and laughing in, for, in a foreign accent and I escaped. Yes, dear. Now, I think you could do with some more hair clips, don't you? No. Let's say half a dozen to be on the safe side, said her mother. Coraline didn't say anything. In the car on the way back home, Coraline said, What's in the empty flat? I don't know. Nothing, I expect. Probably looks like our flat before we've moved in. Empty rooms. Do you think you could get to it from our flat? Not unless you walk through the bricks, dear. They got home around lunchtime. The sun was shining, although the day was cold. Coraline's mother looked in the fridge and found a sad little tomato and a piece of cheese with green stuff growing on it. There was only a crust in the bread bin. I'd better dash to the shops and get some fish fingers or something, said her mother. Do you want to come? No, said Coraline. Suit yourself, said mother, and left. Then she came back and got her purse and the car keys and went out again. Why did she come back? She left and then she came back. Why did she come back? Coraline was bored. She flipped through her book her mother was reading about na native people in a distant country. How every day they would pay they would take white pieces of silk and draw on them in wax, then dip them in silk dyes, then draw on then draw on them more in wax and dye them more, then boil the wax out in the hot water and then finally throw the now beautiful cloths on a fire and burn them to ashes. It seemed particularly pointless to Coraline, but she hoped that the people enjoyed it. She was still bored and her mother wasn't yet home. Coraline got a chair and pushed it over to the kitchen door. She climbed onto the chair and reached up. She clambered down and got a broom. 
the mudroom in the cupboard. She climbed back on the chair again and reached up for the broom. Cheek! And she thought. She climbed down from the chair and picked up the keys. She smiled triumphantly. Then she leaned the broom against the wall and went into the drawing room. The family did not use the drawing room. They had inherited the furniture from Caroline's grandmother along with a wooden coffee table, a side table, a heavy glass ashtray and the oil painting of a bowl of fruit. Caroline could never work out why anyone would want to paint a bowl of fruit other than that the room was empty. There were no knickknacks. Sorry guys. Other than that, the room was empty. There were no knickknacks on the mantelpiece, no statues or clocks, nothing that made it feel comfortable or livable. The old black key felt colder than any of the others. She pushed it into the keyhole. It turned smoothly with a satisfying clunk. Coraline stopped and listened. She knew she was doing something wrong and she was trying to listen for her mother coming back, but she heard nothing. Oh, I've done that bed talk so many times. You know you're doing something wrong. Even though no one's around, you're paranoid that they're going to come back. That's what Coraline was feeling too. She's a bit of all of us. And then Coraline put her hand on the doorknob and turned it and finally she opened the door. It opened onto a dark hallway. The bricks had gone as if they'd never been there. There was a cold, musty smell coming through the open doorway. It smelled like something very old and very slow. Coraline went through the door. She wondered what the empty flat would be like. It felt well where the corridor led. Coraline walked down the corridor uneasily. There was something very familiar about it. The carpet beneath her feet was the same carpet they had in their flat. The wallpaper was the same wallpaper they had. The picture hanging in the hall was the same that they had hanging in their hall at home. She knew where she was. She was in her own home. She hadn't left. She shook her head, confused. She stared at the picture hanging on the wall. No, it wasn't exactly the same. The picture they had in their own hallway showed a boy in old-fashioned clothes staring at some bubbles. But now the expression on his face was different. He was looking at the bubbles as if... as if he were planning to do something very nasty to them indeed. And there was something peculiar about his eyes. Coraline stared at his eyes, trying to work out what exactly was different. She almost had it when somebody said, Coraline! It sounded like her mother. Coraline went into the kitchen where the voice had come from. A woman stood in the kitchen with her back to Coraline. She looked a little like Coraline's mother, only... Only her skin was as white as paper. Only she was tall and thinner. Only her fingers were too long and they never stopped moving and her dark red fingernails were curved and sharp. Coraline, said the woman, is that you? And then she turned round. Her eyes were big black buttons. Lunchtime, Coraline, said the woman. Who are you? asked Coraline. I'm your mother. Your other mother, said the woman. Go and tell your other father that lunch is ready. She opened the door of the oven. Suddenly Coraline realised how hungry she was. 
It smells wonderful. Well, go on. Coraline went down the hall to where her father's study was. She opened the door. There was a man in there sitting at the keyboard with his back to her. Hello, said Coraline. I, I mean, she said to say that lunch is ready. The man turned around. Even he was going to be happy. His eyes were broken, big and black and shiny. Hello, Coraline, he said. I'm starving. He got up and went to, went with her into the kitchen. They sat at the table and Coraline's other mother brought them lunch. A huge golden brown roasted chicken, fried potatoes, tiny green peas. Coraline shoveled the food into her mouth. It tasted wonderful. I've been waiting for you for a long time, said Coraline's other father. For me? Yes, said the other mother. It wasn't the same here without you, but we knew you'd arrive one day, and then we could be a proper family. Would you like some more chicken? It was the best chicken that Coraline had ever eaten, but her mother sometimes made chicken, but it was always out of packets or frozen and was very dry, and it never tasted of anything. When Coraline's father cooked chicken, he brought real chicken. But he did strange things to it, like stewing it in wine or stuffing it with prunes or baking it in pastry. And Coraline had always refused to touch it on principle. She took some more chicken. I didn't know I had another mother, said Coraline cautiously. Of course you do. Everyone does, said the other mother, her black button eyes gleaming. After lunch, I thought you might like to play in your room with the rats. The rats? From upstairs. Coraline had never seen a rat except on television. She was quite looking forward to it. This was turning out to be a very interesting day after all. After lunch, her other parents did the washing up and Coraline went down the hall to her other bedroom. It was different from her bedroom at home. For a start, it was painted in an off-putting shade of green and a peculiar shade of pink. Coraline decided that she wouldn't have to sleep in there, but that the colour scheme was an awful lot more interesting than, in, than the one in her own bedroom. There were all sorts of remarkable things in there she'd never seen before. Wind-up angels that fluttered around the bedroom, like startled sparrows. Books with pictures that writhed and crawled and shimmered. Little dinosaur skulls that chattered their teeth as she passed. A whole toy box filled with wonderful toys. This is more like it, thought Coraline. She looked out of the window. Outside the view was the same one that she saw from her own bedroom. Trees, fields and beyond them on the horizon, distant purple hills. Do you see out of your bedroom? Something black scurried across the floor and vanished under the bed. Coraline got down on her knees and looked under the bed. Fifty little red eyes stared back at her. Hello, said Coraline. Are you the rats? They came out from under the bed blinking their eyes in the light. They had short, soot black fur, little red eyes, pink paws like tiny hands, and pink hairless tails like long, smooth lines. Can you talk? she asked. The largest, blackest of the rats shook his head. It had an unpleasant sort of smile, Coraline thought. Well, asked Coraline, what do you do? The rats formed a circle. Then they began to climb on top of each other, carefully but swiftly, until they had formed a pyramid with the largest rat at the top. The rats began to sing in high, whispery voices. We have teeth and we have tails. We have tails, we have eyes. We were here before you fell. You 
will be reunited. Hey, the Christian song. Hard on the show she'd had it with her accent for the night. Although she was unable to remember exactly where. Then the pyramid fell apart and the rats scampered fast and black towards the door. The other crazy old man upstairs was standing in the doorway holding a tall black hat in his hand. The rats scampered up him, burrowing into his pockets and into his shirt and up his trouser leg and down his neck. Mm. The largest rat climbed onto the old man's shoulder, swung up onto the long grey moustache, past the big black button eyes and onto the top of the man's head. In seconds, the only evidence that the rats were all there was the restless lumps under the man's clothes, forever sliding from place to place across him. And there was the largest rat still, who stared down with glittering red eyes at Coraline from the man's head. The old man put his hat on, and the last rat was gone. Hello, Coraline, said the other old man upstairs. I heard you were here. It is time for the rats to have their dinner, but you can come up with me, if you like, and watch them feed. There was something hungry in the old man's button eyes that made Coraline feel uncomfortable. No, thank you, she said. I'm going outside to explore. The old man nodded. Very slowly. Coraline could hear the rats whispering to each other, although she couldn't tell what they were saying. She was not certain that she wanted to know what they were saying. Where the parents stood in the kitchen doorway, she walked down the corridor smiling identical smiles and waving slowly. Have a nice time outside, said her other mother. We'll just wait here for you to come back, said her other father. When Caroline got to the front door, she turned back and looked at them. They were still there, watching her. Waving, smiling. Caroline walked outside and down the stairs. So, what do you think of Caroline's strange journey in this place now? Who are those people? Can she go back? Think about a few more questions that you have about the story so far. Maybe three questions that you can tell them to your adult who's perhaps been watching this with you. Or maybe you want to go and tell them what we've read so far and tell them some of the questions that you have. Try and think of three different questions. Come up with three more. See you tomorrow for chapter four.